Live from the Student Union on campus, this is Goldmine Live. Your weekly all access pass inside Charlotte Athletics is brought to you by Ortho Carolina, proud to present the 2016 Charlotte 49ers football season. Bojangles, Academy Sports and Outdoors, your Carolina Ford dealers. Go to yourfordchoice.com and enter the Adventure Ready giveaway to win a 2017 Escape or Fusion from your Carolina Ford dealers. Harris Teeter, University Eye Associates, and by Wells Fargo. Now, here's your host, Bobby Rosinski. And welcome to Gold Mine Live from Norms in the Student Union on the campus of the Charlotte 49ers. I'm Bobby Rosinski alongside the mayor, Kevin Donnelly, and the head coach of the Charlotte 49ers, <laughs> Mr. Brad Lambert. We'll talk Charlotte 49er football for the next hour as we get you set for the season opener okay. on Thursday on the road at Louisville. Want to get involved? You can tweet your questions at Charlotte 49ers or join us live here at Norms. Fans each week at Goldmine Live, Bojangles will be awarding a 49ers tailgate package to someone in the audience who asked the best question to the coach. So those of you here with us at Norms at the Student Union on campus, get ready with your questions. Let's come up here to this table to my left, uh, to your right, and you can get your question on the air with Coach Lambert. Also about 10 minutes from now, the highlights of the program will take place. That's right. And that is the Bow Time Challenge as Kevin Donnelly We'll go one-on-one -on -one with one person here eating Bojangles. And if there you, you beat Kevin, you get a prize. Yes. Do they have a chance, Kevin? Is there a prize? Do they win a prize if they beat me? I think they get a prize no matter what, to All be right. honest with you. That's good. <laughs> I think the prize is just being able to eat uh, about seven, eight, nine, ten biscuits from Bojangles. So look forward to that, and we'll be picking somebody here very shortly for this opportunity uh, to go one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Donnelly eating some Bojangles. I think you just arrived, Kev. The Bojangles is here. Yeah, the Bojangles it's hot. is in the building. It's fresh. <laughs> it is. There it is. And it'll That's be devoured. Now, you can't lose, Kevin. That'd be embarrassing to all of us up here. I mean, it just depends. I mean, if K1 Short walks in and beats me, I'm not going to be. <laughs> well, you know, he's not at practice by. today. Maybe he will show up <laughs> and uh, be there looking to take on Kevin Donnelly. But we'll talk Charlotte 49er football here with Brad Lambert, the head coach of the 49er football team. An old hat now here as we get to another season, a year four of 49er football. What was this offseason like for you? Uh, last year, first year Conference USA, and now kind of in that routine where you know what's happening each year. Yeah, and I think our guys had a really good, you know, it all, our calendar starts in January, so it was a good, good off season for us in January through, through that off season, We hit spring ball, uh, brought the new guys in in January and got them indoctrinated through spring practice. Our guys have worked extremely hard. Then you hit your summer mode, which is really phase three, uh, where Coach Darning really just works them out pretty good in the weight room, on the field. Uh, our guys have done a really nice job throughout that whole process. Uh, they're working extremely hard. Uh, and they know coming off of last year, you know, what to expect going into this year and uh, our second year in Conference USA. Uh, and then, you know, phase four is this August camp that we just finished. Um, you try to really hone in on all your football stuff, uh, get your game plan ready for Louisville. And uh, I thought they gave us a good camp. Uh, we were job to you know, come out of this camp as healthy as we could. That was one of our number one goals. We didn't want to beat the guys up. Uh, we do have a veteran team, so I uh, felt like since January, they, they know how to work, and they've worked extremely hard. So uh, I really feel good about them coming out of camp here and, and headed into game week. And you look last year, you know, two and ten, but I, I know you probably felt there was three, maybe four games you could have gotten if a play went your way at the end of those games. Old Dominion, I think, probably the one that stands out the most for me. But what was your takeaway just from last season and in that first year? Well, that, USA? that was, you know, going into last season, you didn't know where you were going to stack up at the league, uh, playing in FBS football for the first time. Coming out of last season, that's exactly what I thought, Bobby. You know, you have four games in the league. You win two of your non-conference uh, and then you go in, you felt like you had a chance to win four league games with even FAU, our first home game. You know, a minute 40 left in the game, we're driving. I think it's a 14-10 game. We're driving to go up. We go for it on fourth down and throw a pick six. Uh, so we, we had a chance at the end of that game with a minute left. Uh, you look at Old Dominion, San Antonio, we're in overtime. Rice, we missed 
three field goals. We didn't play very well in our special teams in the last game of the year. We could have been up nine zip at the half at Rice. So I felt like there were four games that we had a legitimate shot to win. So coming out of there, I felt like we are a little bit ahead of where I thought we might be going into the season. Well, Coach, with those close games last year, and I heard you mention it in your first answer to Bobby was talking about um, – some of the guys you have back, there's a lot of veterans there now, and you have a lot of senior leaders, and I think those are the things that help you win some of those tight ball games. It has to feel good, Coach, to have um, you know over 30 seniors this year on the team and feel like at least when you're going against other teams, it's apples to apples with age. Yeah, this will be the first time since we've been here that we have more than 10, 11, 12, 13 seniors. Uh, this is our first class. You know, these are all guys we brought in here uh, you know, in the original deal. And so uh, it, you just feel pretty good about that. And that's what's, you know, that's what's, you know, taken place since January. These guys know how to work. And, and so they've, they've really had a good handle on our team and, and how, know how hard to work. So it's been, it's been real comforting, no question. Well, it's, I guess tell the, the people listening at home, you know, this group of seniors is, is the ones that got here when there wasn't a lot of construction. There wasn't the Judy Rose Football Center or the stadium, uh, a lot of open fields. And they kind of came here with the, the hope of creating this program and being some of the first to go through it. Yeah, they're all risk takers. You know, they took a risk and they want to be a part of, of, of something first. Uh, and so to see them go through all that's been real special. Uh, but like you say, we recruited them off of pictures. Uh, our stadium was a soccer field. Uh, we used pictures. I was laughing the other day. We, the first class, when they did their official visits, they come in, you give them a player host. Well, we didn't have any players to host them, so we used the baseball team. And so we were on that first official visit trying to get to know the baseball players. We were trying to get to know the recruits. And so they, they took a risk on us, and so it's a, it's a real special group. And then you – throw in guys like we're going to hear from Nick Cook. You throw in guys like that who, you know what, he came in here out of junior college and he kind of had that same vision. He knew we were going to Conference USA and he really wanted to come in and be a part of, of helping us start this thing and launching it into FBS. So uh, there's some guys that, that we took out of junior college along the way that have really done a nice job and bought in as well. Goldmine live here from Norms at the Student Union. Again, if you would like to ask a question to Coach, just walk up here. Great Todd standing up. Uh, the microphone will be here. You can ask a question, and at the end of the show, we'll pick the best question to win a Bojangles tailgate package for the upcoming game against Elon, the first home game coming up September 10th at Jerry Richardson Stadium. And, Coach, uh, a lot of things feel like they stay the same. Coaching staff mainly the same. But for the first time, we'll see a new quarterback for the Charlotte 49ers here in 2016, Kevin Olson. You named him even before, I think, the spring game. What, what led to you the comfortability that Kevin Olson, he's the guy for this team? Well, just, you know, he'd won a job. I mean, that was, you know, got kind of obvious as we moved through spring ball, and we felt like he was the guy. So let's, let's not make his first start with our offense uh, the Louisville game. So we wanted it to be the spring game. So we just went ahead and did it before. And, uh, you know, he was the clear-cut guy, and so... Uh, we just wanted to get on with it and, and get it established. That way you go through summer, everybody knows. And, and uh, I just felt like it was important for our football team to, to know who our quarterback was going to be. And Kevin's handled it extremely well. He came in in January and, and uh, you know, he's, he's you know, gotten into our team and really done a nice job from that standpoint off the field. Uh, he's playing well on the field, and, and uh, hopefully he can go out there uh, Thursday and have some success. Uh, you can tweet your questions as well at Charlotte 49ers and at badfan 49 er tweeted in and speaking just of the offense and I'm assuming I know the answer to this, but will we still see the same no huddle offense this year for Charlotte? Yeah, no question. Uh, our, our thing's always about tempo and being able to run the ball. Uh, you know, we got Khalif back. We got most of our offensive line back. Uh, we lost Danny Book, uh, you know, at, at tackle, but everybody's back up front. Uh, got a lot of guys around Kevin that are all back. Uh, so mainly being Khalif, uh, 
And so we need to play as fast as we can, establish the run game. We always want to be able to run the ball. We want to make first downs. That's our whole deal offensively. Uh, we got we to get it going, making first downs and, and number of plays, and, and then the points will come from there. Now, did Kevin have a history with this offense? As we seem to see it all over the place in college football these days. Yeah, so. you know, he, they did a little bit at Riverside, but uh, he's adopted well. Uh, and our quarterback has to make a lot of decisions, quick decisions, uh, you know, when, when you're – you're giving that guy run pass options. And so he's got to know, you know, what he's getting. And based on, you know, the play we've called, uh, what his out is, if they've got too many guys in there to stop the run. So um, the, he, he's uh, handled that well so far. How have you liked his transition from, you know, he came enrolled after Christmas break, uh, has had to get to know new receivers, uh, the backs and everything. Uh, sometimes that can take a while. Do you feel like he's adjusted quickly to that and he's, he's gotten to learn about his receivers? Yeah, you know, that's one of the first things we told him was you want to win the quarterback job, you got to win the team. And so he's had to, you know, get in with our guys and do the extra work. And, and uh, I think he lived with Nick Cook. You know, those guys, when he first came, they were trying to find a place for him to live. So he's infiltrated himself well into our football team and, and gotten in time with the wideouts and, and put in the work to get that done. Well, I know we're talking starting quarterback, but while we're on that position, might as well talk about Hassan Clue. He's looked really good this offseason. It's good to see him uh, making some plays for it. You know you got a guy you could go to if, if you needed to. Yeah, no question. Hassan, uh, he made a pretty good battle in the spring. He's a very athletic guy. He's got a good arm. Uh, transferred in here. He was a guy we had originally recruited out of high school, uh, out of Central Cabarrus. Uh, he went to North Carolina A&T and, and uh, wanted to transfer back. So we took him and and uh, he's really done a nice job. Uh, he's a great kid and is really, you know, like I say, he's done a good job with our offense. And, and you know, he's, he's a, a really good backup. And, you know, if we have to put him in the game, then I feel good about that. All right, the food is here. It's time for Kevin Donnelly to put down the headset and get set for the bow time challenge. We'll take a timeout. That will happen on the other side of the break as Goldmine Live from Norms continues on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. You think you got what it takes? It's time for the Bowtime Challenge with Kevin Donnelly, presented by Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits. I will beat you down. I will eat you into oblivion. Now let's head back to the student union and your host, Bobby Rosinski. And welcome back. Gold Mine Live from Norms here on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Kevin Donnelly is getting ready for the Bow Time Challenge. He'll be going up against Trevor, who's wearing a Red Sox hat, so that quickly drops him down in my book. But we'll see. It's Kevin and Trevor Bow Time Challenge. Let's go. Let's see. They got about seven, eight biscuits here. Some sweet tea as well. Food already falling out. It's like July 4th here inside Norms. So far, we got half a biscuit down, I believe, from Trevor. I can't see Kevin. Is Kevin doing well? Looks like we got one biscuit down from Kevin. The sweet tea going as well. Donnelly in the lead. Joey Chestnut, watch out. As Donnelly continues to perform well. And time is up. And I'm assuming Kevin won. How many biscuits did we get, Kevin? One and a half. But you can take the rest of the biscuits with you, I'm assuming. So that should be a win for Trevor to take the rest of the biscuits. He'd probably take Kevin's, too. I don't think he needs to eat anymore. So uh, Kevin Donnelly, 1-0.
in the bow time challenge and we'll see how it continues throughout the season so be sure you're here at norms uh, each week as we have gold mine live uh, the new time 12 to 1 on charlotte49ers.com as we continue here on the charlotte 49er img sports network and he brings the rest of the biscuit up with him here to the stage to eat I'm so a I'd former agree. offensive lineman, so yeah. I'm going to take advantage of a free meal. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty good biscuit, too. It's just hard eating a bread-type food. I mean, you just got to yeah. keep swigging the, the sweet iced tea, but I do enjoy their Bojangles sweet tea, so it was yeah, good. a little bread and sugar. You're good. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, Kevin, 1-0 in the bow time challenge. Are you going to put that on your resume? I've, I've never done any kind of uh, eating challenge like that, and um, it I enjoyed it. I so felt you, focused. And really, towards the end, it was like a guy running to the end zone with about a 10-yard lead. I looked at him. He still had, hadn't finished the first biscuit. I was well in, underway with my second. So I just started, jogged it on home. I you just started brought high it. stepping, didn't you? Yeah, I did the Deion Sanders, <laughs> got the hand behind the head, and I danced it on in. All right, we continue here again. If you want to have a question for Coach, and we have our first question, we're going to give him the mic. Mark is going to come up, ask the first question here, looking for that Bojangles tailgate package for the first game of the season as the Charlotte 49ers at home, at least, uh, taking on Elon next Saturday. The season opener coming up on the road against Louisville. We'll try it out. Mark, the floor is yours. Coach, is there a player that we did not see during spring practice that will be an impact player this fall? Yeah, that guy would probably be Ed Roll. Uh, Ed, we took him out of uh, Garden City Junior College. He's come in, made an impact for us at safety. We'll start at safety Thursday night. He got in here in May, first summer term. So Ed's from uh, Miami, Florida, uh, really having a good camp. I uh, had a good summer for us, a good camp. So Ed Roll's probably the guy that's going to have the biggest impact that wasn't here in spring practice. All right, appreciate the question, that's Mark. A really Anybody good else? question, by the way. It was. It was better than anything I had written down uh, for the show. So if you want to take over, Mark, let me know. I'll go eat some biscuits uh, with Kevin uh, as we continue here. So if you have a question, just come up here to the front, and we'll give you a mic, and you can ask it on here to head coach Brad Lambert. And uh, with the defensive side of the ball, Coach Wally back year two, how big is that when you get the, the defensive system and be in the second straight year? Well, that's huge, uh, you know, because you, you, you always – once you get into the system a year and the kids get comfortable with it, it's, it just goes a lot better. You know, they just know what's coming, and then the install's a little bit easier. Uh, they've been through this install three or four times now, so uh, August was a lot easier for our guys. Um, so it's, it's good to have him back and, and keep that continuity moving. Uh, and in the coaching staff, I think Dean Hood, kind of the one new addition, what's his role uh, for your staff? Well, Coach Hood's come in. Uh, he's coaching uh, our our tight ends uh, for us took over that role. We moved Coach Richardson to the offensive line. Uh, so Hoodie's doing that, and then he's really having an impact on our special teams. We named him special teams coordinator, so he's uh, kind of heading that up for us. Uh, some of the guys are still helping with kickoff, kickoff return, things like that, but, but Dean's really helping us from that standpoint. Uh, and then Coach Edmonds you know, came in as, as well on defense, coaching our outside linebackers. He's done a really nice job since coming in in January. Uh, replacing uh, Coach Sykes, who left and went to Navy. Uh, so I've been really pleased with him as well. Well, looking with that change, you did move uh, Coach Johnson Richardson, uh, the tight end coach, to offensive line. And that seems to have been a real seamless uh, transition because he knew Coach Ratliff so well. He had coached with him for several years, being with the tight end position. The tight ends and, and offensive line work closely together. And it seems like he's done a good job with them this spring. He has, and, and that's exactly right, Kevin, that those guys, he and Coach Ratliff worked so close together uh, for since the beginning. And so it was an easy transition for him. The kids, it was, it was easy for them. They knew him. And so uh, he was involved with them. So, uh, yeah, it's been good. And Johnson's done a nice job. Well, while we're on the offensive side, you know, they mentioned – you mentioned someone that might make an impact early on on the defensive side with Roll. Uh, any guys on offense, new guys coming in that uh, may make an impact on the offensive side? Yeah, I think probably the two running backs, uh, Robert Washington and Ben LeMay, you know, we'll take a look at those guys Thursday night. Uh, both of them are very talented guys. They both had good August uh, camps for us. Uh, and I would look for them to, to really, you know, get a chance to get in and carry the ball, uh, you know, as we move through the season. Uh, we can't just rely on Khalif every snap. And then, of course, we're trying to utilize Matt Johnson in that role as well, uh, use him in a lot of different areas of the game. So 
It'll be, I think, those two guys probably the new guys coming in uh, on offense, probably Robert and Ben LeMay. It's Goldmine live here from Norms on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Coming up on the other side, we'll talk with redshirt senior Nick Cook and get his thoughts on his senior season with Charlotte in the upcoming game at Louisville. Also, you'll hear from our student athlete of the week, Anna Henderson of the 49er volleyball team. This is Goldmine live from Norms on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Hotel, hotel. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Mom. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. The Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Ortho Carolina, the official team position of your Charlotte 49ers. Welcome in for another year of Student Athlete of the Week. Our first guest of the new year is Anna Henderson. She's on the volleyball team. And Anna, you know, season is just underway now. Just tell me, I mean, how excited are you for the full season still ahead of you? We're really excited. It's looking like it's going to be a really good year. Everybody's bonding. Everybody's practicing. We're ready to go. You're one of the returning players on this team with a lot of new faces on the team. How are you kind of helping uh, the newbies, especially the freshmen, kind of get integrated here at Charlotte and kind of find their way? Well, you know, it's always like difficult first week of classes and everybody, nobody knows where to go and everybody's rushing to practice, but we're all just trying to help each other, make sure everybody's on schedule, make sure everybody knows where they're going, kind of getting that routine. And how have you kind of done readjusting to classes and everything now? Are you kind of getting the hang of it again? <laughs> um, I'm getting there. I actually know where all my classes are, so I'm trying not to get my schedules too mixed up. Always important parents that your children know where the classes are. Tell me, what are you majoring in and why did you decide to go that route? Um, I'm a sociology major and I actually just really like the study of people, like the study of groups and really like the opportunity to help people as much as I can. How do you find the time or do you ever find it difficult to manage a, a full class load with sociology on top of also being a Division One athlete? Um, it can be pretty difficult. It's a full-time job, but it's also a lot of fun, and it's just a matter of balancing your time, learning how to discipline your time schedule. Well, Anna, we wish you the best of luck on managing that schedule and also with the season ahead. Thank you. That's Anna Henderson. She is our first Student Athlete of the Week for the new year. This has been the Ortho Carolina Student Athlete of the Week, brought to you by Ortho Carolina, the official team position of your Charlotte 49ers. Follow Charlotte Athletics on Twitter at Charlotte 49ers to stay up to date on everything you need to know about the 49ers. Welcome back. Goldmine Live from Norms here on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. If you got a question, feel free to tweet them in at Charlotte 49ers. Again, if you're here live in attendance at Norms, walk up to the stage and you can ask your question on air when Coach Lambert rejoins us at the bottom of the hour. But a pleasure to be joined now here in between Kevin and myself. Redshirt senior linebacker, Mr. Nick Cook. Nick, how are you? Good. How you doing? Uh, doing well, Nick. And uh, just the month of August. So what has this month been like for you guys? You prepare for uh, quite a season opener on the road at Louisville. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Well, this whole month has just been a grind. You know, that's how, you know, camp is when you get into college football. The first two weeks are really just, you know, getting through it, working hard, uh, learning, the, learning the defense, uh, seeing what, what young guys uh, grow to uh, be able to play, get to the top, and then... You know, with the first game of the year, we get a extra time to prepare. So, you know, we've had two weeks now to prepare for Louisville, which, uh, which really benefits us for how well that offense is. And as you get ready for Louisville, Lamar Jackson, their quarterback, had a great end of the season uh, for the Louisville Cardinals, can throw it, can run it as well. What do you see when you, you watch Lamar Jackson and uh, the challenge you face Thursday night? I've watched a lot of film on Lamar Jackson, and he is one heck of an athlete. He's a great player, great football player. Um, I think what's going to benefit us, though, is uh, he's still pretty young. Um, he makes some wrong reads, uh, kind of struggles a little bit with accuracy. He has a great, strong arm, uh, but what we cannot do is let him let his feet beat us. Um, he loves to run. I think he, he likes to take it in his own hands sometimes, but we've got to make him make mistakes because he is young um, and use that for our benefit. Well, if you're going to get after a guy like that, you, it starts up the middle, and you're right there leading the defense. But it's nice to have a guy in front of you, number 65, Larry Ogunjobi. Right. How does it feel when he's in the game? Does it feel a drop-off if he subs out for a few plays? Uh, it definitely does. Uh, it's definitely a game-changer. Uh, when he's in there, uh, it takes up two, sometimes even three linemen. Uh, 
uh, just to block him. So with, with that, as an inside linebacker, he takes two guys. It, it really frees us up for run-throughs. It's definitely on outside zones or, or you know, when they have to, to double team on a block back with a guard pull. Um, it definitely takes the focus off the inside linebackers, and it has uh, opportunities for missed blocks. Uh, but when he comes out of the game, uh, Tanner Fleming comes in and does a great job for us too. Um, he's definitely not Larry, but he definitely does a great job for us. He holds his own. Well, you, you bring up Tanner. You know, I think the thing that's nice about this defensive line group that I'm noticing is it's uh, got the most age on it mm-hmm. and the, the most depth that it's had since, uh, since ever, really. This year is a, is a great year for the defensive lineman. It's got to feel pretty reassuring as a linebacker that you've got some guys up front that are going to keep those guys off of you. Uh, of course, uh, Coach Curry does a heck of a job with that D-line. Uh, ever since he took over that, you know, the last couple of years, their game has just escalated uh, out the roof. You know, they've done one heck of a job. Um, and that's what's nice. We've had a lot of guys, like you said, get some depth. Like Randy has become uh, a very good player for us, too. Uh, he's he's going to be a big factor for us in this, in this first game. Um, but uh, I've always been a big believer that it, everything starts on the D-line. The D-line, uh, the battle of the line of scrimmage, that's the most important because if you can stop the run, especially in this game, we stop the run, I don't think they can beat us in the air. Um, so the D-line's going to have to have a big game for us. Well, we've talked a little bit about Louisville, and, you know, what goes into that's all the preparation in the off season, and that starts with setting goals for yourself. And, mm-hmm. you know, this being your senior outing, you know, what are some things personally that you, you worked on this off season you wanted to get better so you could be a good, pro, uh, a good linebacker this 2016 season? Uh, I really worked on just my eye control and doing my job. I think that's really as a whole defense unit what we struggled with last year, not doing too much. Um, if you look just over the whole entire chart of mistakes last year, it was doing, trying to do too much and, and, and not having your eyes on your right keys. Um, definitely as an inside linebacker, you've you got to have your times where you've got to make plays, be a, uh, be a ball player. Um, but as an entire unit group, and just for me too, uh, really studied the film to, just to learn the game more. Um, you know, I put on a little weight here and there, you know, worked on my speed, worked on my technique and all that. But uh, really, as you get older, the, the better you know the game, the more that helps you. You know, that's when my football IQ has grown. I think that's the most important thing that's really helped me this offseason. I put on weight too, but he probably did it in a much better <laughs> way. Uh, redshirt senior Nick Cook here as we continue here at Goldmine Live from Norms. Uh, ask Coach Lambert, but Coach Wally, second year, what's it like for you on that defensive side and, and your expectations for the defense as a whole? Uh, Coach Wally, uh, he's great. Ever since he's came in here, he's changed the whole attitude and uh, outlook on how we play defense. Uh, he's definitely one of those guys that uh, – as a defensive unit, when we're out there, he's a guy that we love to play for. He brings energy to us. Uh, but, you know, when we break the huddle to take the field, he, he definitely has helped us grow as a unit, uh, understand the game, understand, understand the scheme that we want to do each week. Um, and then just some goals this year, we, we definitely want to be at the top of the, the conference uh, as a total defensive unit. You know, that, that's rushing, passing, total defense, um, take away the run, uh, make teams beat us. And, and like I said uh, already, not to have – the big plays, the mental mistakes, uh, you know, you know, not not reading your keys, you know, controlling your eyes and those types of things. So, but he's done a great job ever since he's gotten here, and looking good for the future. He talked about the D line, but your fellow linebackers, you know, Carrington Kings won. I think that game against Campbell, where you got hurt uh, your yep. first year, he stepped up and uh, played big throughout the year. But where's the rest? You see this linebacker unit? Uh, like you said, Carrington King, he's uh, he's a great player for us too. He really holds it down. Um, he's got a bunch of reps last year so he's got some experience underneath his belt he, he now steps in for as a starter you know Caleb was that guy last year um, and then after him is JBT Justin Bridges Thompson he's uh, really grown up since the spring and uh, this fall camp he's really he's really taken off and been doing well for us um, and then other guys that we need to continue to grow is you know Garrison Duncan uh, he's been doing well and Cam Darley he's also been doing well so those guys you know they don't have much actual game time under their belts but uh you know that's why we always got to bring uh, bring it each day to be prepared for when that time comes for them and finally the, the season opener on thursday what is the, the mindset of the players right now going to take on a team that is ranked in the top 20 in the country uh we're all ready to go you know we're tired of you know being up on each other for the last three four weeks we're ready to go down there and compete and get a win uh we're not going down there you know just uh get paid you know these these first games when you play the big teams and you're like the mid-major school or the underdog a lot of people will call them it's just the buyout game you know you're going down there to get paid but we're definitely not going down there just to get paid we're going down there to get a win and uh, show everybody who charlotte is and put the team on the map so All right. 
There you go. Redshirt senior Nick Cook. As we continue here, we'll take a timeout. Coming up next, Brad Lambert joins us again. Nick, appreciate your time. Appreciate you. There you go. Nick Cook. This is Goldmine Live from Norms on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. A uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Oh, no, oh, no. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Goldmine live continuing here from Norms on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Bobby Rosetsky, Kevin Donnelly, and joined again by the head coach of the Charlotte 49ers, Brad Lambert, as we get set for the season opener on a Thursday against Louisville, a 7 o'clock kick. You can come up here to the stage, ask a question, and each week at Goldmine Live, Bojangles will be awarding a 49ers tailgate package to someone in the audience who has the best question of the coach. So those of you here with us in Norms at the Student Union on campus get Get ready with your questions, and this first package will be for that Elon game uh, coming up on September 10th at Jerry Richardson Stadium. But Donovan is here with us at stage. Donovan, fire away. Hey, how you doing? Um, just had a question. Have you, has your team, well, have you prepared your team differently, knowing that you're playing a ranked team like Louisville rather than you know any other team? No, I think the biggest thing is our guys know who we're playing, uh, and they're ranked extremely high. They're 19th in one poll, so. You don't have to – it doesn't take a lot of work to get the guys' attention on who we're playing. Uh, I think the, the preparation's been how do we handle the quarterback because he's such an athletic guy. And we've got to make sure that we do as good a job as we can containing him because he's an athletic guy. But the preparing part for a really good team, which that's one of the advantages of opening with a ranked team like Louisville is – the guys know all summer they got to be working extremely hard because it's going to be on the first game. So uh, that's from a prep standpoint, uh, the guys know. And so we went with our normal schedule that we always do. Uh, and the biggest thing is just trying to contain this quarterback. All right. Thanks, Thank Donovan. you for the question, Donovan. And just talking with Nick Cook, I mean, the confidence you got to love uh, from these guys getting ready for, for this matchup on Thursday night. Yeah, no question. Our guys are confident, uh, but it, it's a tough challenge. These guys are a really good football team. Uh, Coach been doing it. You know, we, we played him 10 years ago in the Orange Bowl. He was at Louisville at that time, and, and so uh, he's done a really good job. He's a heck of a football coach. He's, he's going into year three. He's got Louisville back to kind of where he had it when he left, um, and he's got some athletic guys. You know, got a lot of guys back on defense, got the offensive line back, uh, running backs back quarterback obviously is the kind of where it all starts and he's got a lot of confidence right now so uh, it's a it's a tough challenge our guys have watched a lot of film they've been studying them all you know all off season and they know what lies ahead of them so I think getting to know somebody can can really help you with your confidence from that standpoint and you're going into a tough environment so you've got to be the one thing we talked to our guys a lot about all camp is just being zeroed in on the next play because it's going to be a tough environment and there's going to be some bad things happen during the game. It's always how do you how do you respond to that, uh, you know, that adversity that comes up. Yeah, you mentioned Lamar Jackson uh, last year rushing for 980 yards, threw for over 1,812 touchdowns. It kind of developed as the season went on uh, for the Louisville Cardinals. And you guys played Kentucky. Uh-huh. They played Kentucky right after that, I believe. That's correct. Do you, do you stare at that game to try to get the most information you well, can? Well, you know, that's a, that's a good game to watch because it's such a big game between those two schools. You know, that's a that's a huge rivalry game in that state. So they're gonna play extremely well against each other. They're gonna they're gonna do whatever it takes to win that game. Uh, Kentucky jumped out on them and actually had a pretty good lead in the game. Louisville fought their way back, just kept grinding and, and uh, ended up winning the game. But the game that stands out to me is the bowl game because Texas A and M has really, really good players and you know l- l- Lamar really, you know, he played well in that game. They had a lot of guys play well, but uh, he was the, kind of the difference in that game. And, and you know, when A&M can't tackle him, that, that can be a problem for you. <laughs> well, you mentioned the, the quarterback and talked about how tough he is to, to tackle. What do you see as some of the challenges at other positions? Like what are some, some matchups that you're uh, really counting on your guys to rise up? Because they have talent. 
They do. I think the, the key for me going in this game is going to be our defensive front against their old line. Uh, can we control the line of scrimmage? They have a really, really big offensive line. Uh, they're, they got a lot of those guys back, uh, but that's the one area. They had new kids last year. Now they got a year under their belt. So our matchup, we've got some old guys in our defensive front. So I think that's what it's going to come to come down to is controlling that line of scrimmage. Can we can we control the line of scrimmage against their offensive line? And then one thing we've talked to our, our team hard about is controlling the big plays. Uh, you know, our secondary's really got to do a nice job because you know, Quick's a really good receiver. They got they got some game breakers at wideout. So, um, you know, when the play breaks down and Lamar's scrambling and, and you know, that, that kind of that offense by accident that will happen to you, are we in position? Uh, so I think those two things defense are going to really be critical for us. And then, you know, our special teams, you know, we got a lot of, a lot of guys back. Our special teams need to be on point. Uh, they've got a new kicker, a new punter. Uh, so can we take advantage of the – of that area of the game, uh, can we win the special teams, you know, aspect of it? We put a lot of work in that uh, part of the game, so that needs to be critical for us as well. Well, just to, to follow up with uh, the first question, it's, you know, those are some matchups you're watching. I don't want you to give away a game plan or anything, but what are some play, things you're looking forward to seeing how some guys play where you feel like you've got some talent at a position and you're excited to see those guys go out there and perform Thursday? Yeah, like I say, always up front, you know, defensively. You know, for Larry, you know, this is going to be a, a big game for our defensive front, like I said earlier, how, how we match up against a really, really good ACC team. Uh, you know, this is a team that's going to contend for the Atlantic Division Championship with the likes of Clemson and Florida State. And there's some good teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and so – uh, this team will be right at the top of that. So how do we, how does a guy like Larry and Banks and Nick Cook and Carrington King, Daquan Lucas is a guy that kind of always gets, kind of gets left behind from a publicity standpoint, but he's such an impact guy for us. How does he match up coming off the edge? Can he make some difference making plays in the game to get a turnover, to make a big sack, to get him behind the chains? Uh, so those are things that I'm looking forward to. Uh, how our offensive line uh, does against this defensive front. Their nose guard's an extremely good player. Their two inside backers are all ACC guys. Uh, so how, how we run the ball against this front will be another tell, I think, in this, in this game. You know, can we, can we run the ball and have a chance to move the change from that standpoint? All right, you got a question for Coach? You can always uh, submit them up via Twitter, at Charlotte49ers. We've got a couple we'll get to on the other side of the break as we continue here at Norm's. It's Goldmine Live on the Charlotte 49ers IMG Sports Network. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Oh, no, oh, no. Guitar. Reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party. Relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Goldmine Live continuing here from Norms. Show brought to you in part by Sharon View Federal Credit Union, proud sponsor of Charlotte Athletics, wants to help you support your 49ers. Members, visit your local branch to get more information on how you can get free tickets to 49er home football games while supplies last. Uh, Got some questions on Twitter at Charlotte 49ers. He touched on running back uh, earlier in the show, but at NLP 49, which of those running backs behind Khalif standing out to you? Well, I've really been proud of both of them. Uh, I thought uh, Robert, you know, had a really good scrimmage. Ben LeMay, they both, they both have unique gifts in running the ball. They have good feet, good eyes. Uh, they see things. And then they finish with power. So Robert really reminds me of Khalif when I watch him run. Uh, when you see him play, he's, he's going to look a lot like Khalif Phillips. Uh, Benny's a little bit different. He's a little closer to the ground. He's a, he's a guy that can see it and. He runs with a lot of impact, you know, at contact. He's a he's a con, he's not afraid of contact. So I've been really proud of him. He's he's really had a good camp. So it's going to be interesting to see how that flushes out. But uh, you know, it's a long season, and and you know, we want to we want to run the ball. So um, we're going to need those guys uh, as we move forward. You know, we lost Khalif toward the end of the year last year. For us to go out and thinking, 
in Conference USA play, playing the likes of Louisville, that we can go out there and feed Khalif 30 times a game is probably not realistic. Uh, so we need to make sure that he's always fresh when he's in the game. So it's going to be uh, – and then, of course, you got the big bruiser in Matt. You know, we, he reminds me of Larry Zonka, you know. I mean, he's just going to bruise you. He's a, uh, he's a bull in the china shop, no question. And so – and we want to utilize him in a lot of different aspects. So – uh, it's going to be interesting to watch this unfold. And how has Matt gone about this process of, of making the change and being the running back and maybe some wildcat type plays from Matt? Just, just like he's done everything. You know, he's just a first class person, uh, first off, and he, he wants the, nothing but the best for the 49ers. So when you start there, you know, he's really just adopted his role and, and taken it. He's run with it. Um, you know, you'll able to see him in the game, you know, whether it's on the punt team, you know whether he's playing quarterback, running back, we're going to utilize him all over the place uh, to try to keep him involved. And you can't have enough guys like Matt that are high-energy guys, guys that come in there and uh, just provide that, that jolt of, of energy. Um, he, he's always got a good attitude about it. and He's, I think, done a good job not only with the transition but also keeping that energy up in the whole team. Yeah, no question. He walks in the building every day. He's amped up pretty good. So uh, he's, uh, he's an everyday guy, no question. He doesn't have... He doesn't have any bad days, so he loves to play. And I think that whole – he and that whole class, like they've experienced all these firsts, and now they're going through their last. And so they value what's going on right now as their last camp and this is their last season. And it seems like it was just yesterday they were getting here. So uh, that whole group, it's a good group of, of guys. And so they've come in and – they're, they're really uh, having a good camp, and they're, they're fired up every day to come to work. And it kind of puts that, you mentioned all the seniors, and I had this tweet from at badfan 49 er but new player to make the biggest impact. And I guess you mentioned Ed Roll on the defensive side. I could say Kevin Olson on the offensive right. side. But as far as freshmen, uh, where are you there this year of uh, guys that are freshmen to, to have a role on this team? Well, I think that's the running back, you know, position. That's going to be the, the, you know, that – that spot, I think one of those guys is really going to have an impact this year, you know, from a freshman standpoint. Uh, at Gregory Den tweeted in, uh, kick returner, who is your guy this year? Well, we're going to start out at punt return. Uh, Austin Duke will be back there uh, in this game. He'll be our, our punt return guy. Uh, kick return will be Anthony Covington. Uh, we'll use Quattlebaum back there, Chris Montgomery. Uh, we've looked at Trent Bostic back there some. Uh, Covington's had a good, you know, he's a guy that really sees it and hits it. Kickoff return's a little different than punt return. Uh, kickoff return, you got more time, and you see it, you got to hit it. And Anthony and Chris and Mark, they do a pretty good job back there. And to span with special teams, uh, we've seen Blake being the kicker, but uh, you got Muscarello listed. Uh, what made you go with him to be your kicker Thursday well, night against Louisville? Blake will still be our kickoff guy. He's got the, you know, he's got a pretty big leg, and he'll be our kickoff guy. Uh, and we just charted him during during August. We wanted to open that competition up. Uh, you know, we want we need to get better in that aspect of it. I didn't like where our percentages were coming out of last year. I thought they were too low, and so. We just charted all camp, and uh, Stephen came out the highest, uh, right around 80%. And so uh, we're going to go with him and give him the opportunity on uh, Thursday night. All right, it's Goldmine live from Norms. we got one more segment, so last chance to get your questions in uh, through Twitter, at Charlotte49ers. We'll take a timeout. One more segment with the coach as Goldmine live continues from Norms on the Charlotte 49ers IMG Sports Network. Sophie, his 13th birthday. Gift, we've got you. Guitar, coming tomorrow. Road game today, surprise party tomorrow. Uh, change of plans. Game tomorrow. No, birthday tomorrow. Oh, no, oh, no. Guitar, reroute. Birthdays are on birthdays. Party, relocate. UPS My Choice makes rerouting packages easy. Wow. How we're helping companies solve for the needs of customers like Sophie. Goldmine live continuing from Norms. Kevin's confused. Offensive lineman. <laughs> it's easy to confuse him. Just run a twist and they get confused, huh? All right, man. All right. That's He's how it's going to be. He, he wants to have another eating contest. He knows, he, he knows the pain of the sideline guy in the rain now, though, don't you? Oh, man. It was nothing. It was, it, you guys complain way too I much. I know. I actually was sad because that first half you weren't sitting there with no jacket on or nothing. 
I think it was yeah. the Temple game. I went in the tunnel last year. It was raining uh, so hard during that game. Uh, final segment here of Goldmine Live. You can come up and ask a question, and it puts you in the pot to be awarded a 49ers tailgate package from Bojangles for an upcoming home game. And the next home game, of course, the first one against Elon on September 10th. David is up here at the stage for a question with Coach Lambert. David, fire away. So, Coach, we had a lot of close games last year that we weren't able to win. Uh, how many games would y'all consider a successful season to win this year? Well, what, we're, what our team set our goal to, to be is bowl eligible. And so that means we've got to get six wins. Uh, and when you look at that, you know, you look at your non-conference, you play four. You've got you know, you to try to find two in there, three wins in there. And then you go into league play, you know, you then, that dictates how many you've got to win in the league. I thought we had a chance to win four league games last year. Uh, so that's the number our guys are looking at is six to be bowl eligible. All right. Appreciate the question, David. Bahamas Bowl wouldn't be bad. Just I passed that yeah. along to the wife last night. She said she'd Isn't be there okay. one in Hawaii, too, or something. Uh, there might be. Bahamas seems like a shorter flight, though. Oh, so yeah, I, I would right. go for that if we can. Uh, one position, uh, we only have a touchdown uh, coach, but wide receivers. Uh, Austin Duke, of course, back. Trent Bostic, a part of it. But a lot of young guys as well. Uh, where, where do you see the wide receivers right now? Well, it's a pretty talented group for us. Uh, Austin's played a lot of football. Uh, Trent's played a lot. T.L. Ford's uh, played a lot of football for us. He'll be a junior. Uh, we got a guy like Warpay Kofa that's really coming on, uh, pushing. Uriah, La- Uriah LeMay's a little banged up. I don't think uh, he'll be able to play in this game, uh, so we won't have him, you know, to go. And then we got a guy like Juwan Foggy, who we redshirted last year. Uh, we set him out last year, so he'll be a redshirt sophomore. So, uh, and then we need Chris Montgomery's a guy that's playing behind Austin Duke. He's had his best camp since he's been here, so really excited about getting him involved. Mark Qualabom, Nate Mullins. So it's a pretty, you know, pretty deep group for us, and it's a talented group. Uh, the funny thing about wideouts is there's only one ball, though, and so, you know, the quarterback's got a tough job. Uh, a lot of things get dictated on where the ball goes, and he's got a lot of decisions to make. So, uh, you know, those guys, we ask them to do a lot. Uh, they got to block for the run. They got to catch the ball. They got to run good routes. So they've got a tough job, but uh, really, really excited about watching that group play. Well, we've gotten kind of your summary on a lot of different positions. And uh, we talked about the offensive line in general, had to get some offensive line questions in. So I'm going to ask yeah. you probably the changes that you have is that Jamal Covington is back after missing some action last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, how's he doing in his health? And then also on the right side, you have a new starter over there. So how are those two tackle positions for you? Well, really, really proud of Jamal. He's come off that injury from last year. He did miss, you know, about five games for us last year. So uh, not having him was huge. Uh, we need to try to find a way to keep him healthy. Uh, he's had a good camp. Uh, we have protected him some. Uh, but he's had a good camp. Uh, he's a hardworking guy. Uh, on the other side, Chris Brown's, uh, you know, won that job will start for us at tackle where, where Danny Book used to play. Uh, he and uh, Eugene German. Eugene you'll see in the game a lot. Eugene's had a really good camp. Those guys really been battling extremely hard. Uh, so then we got, you know, three guys there we can ro- rotate at tackle. Uh, Chris has played both sides. Eugene's played both sides. So uh, hopefully we can, you know, roll those guys in. Then interior-wise, you know, you got Nate and Wolfgang. You know, you got Casey Perry back. Uh, Darren Drake's a guy that we played as a true freshman last year. And then there's two old guys at center, you know, LaBianc and Barr. They just, there's old crusty guys. The, those two guys, Casey Perry, Jamal, they just, they just guys that they just bring their lunch pail every day and go to work and can't say enough great things about that offensive line group, how they show up every day and work. And, and uh, Coach Rattle would be really proud of them right now. You know, he was really involved in bringing all those guys in. He, he'd be really proud of the way those guys have, have, have worked. Speaking at the old line, I hadn't seen Kevin smile that much since the Bojangles was here <laughs> earlier. And uh, by the way, today's winner of a Bojangles tailgate package for the Niners opening home game against Elon September 10th. I have a drum roll. Donovan. Congratulations, Donovan. It's Bo time. And he'll be hooked up with Bojangles for the game against Elon. And now, Coach, look it up. Uh, you getting stuff from Mark? Mark not happy? <laughs> Mark's, Mark's throwing stuff. He's, like, actually eating Bojangles right now. Yeah. So you're already supporting the cause. 
Uh, Coach, just two minutes left in the, the non-conference throughout the, the first month here of September for you. You know, the rematch with Temple on the road. Elon was a couple of years ago uh, when you went up there and lost a heartbreaker. Uh, do, do you like the non-conference slate you have here for the first month of the yeah, season? Yeah, no question. Our, our non-conference is fair. That's the way we set it up, you know, once we made the decision to uh, go FBS and go back to Conference USA. Uh, this was our philosophy, you know, moving forward that we would play a major Power 5 team. Uh, play two teams that were in the group of five and then play an FCS team. So this fits the model that we set up. And, uh, you know, Temple's a really good football team. They came in here last year with a, you know, a top 25 team. I thought they were extremely good, had a lot of good players on defense. We have the opportunity to, you know, play against them up in uh, Philly this year. Uh, Eastern Michigan's a team that they're really trying to – they got a lot of the similar goals that we do. Uh, you know, they're trying to get to bowl eligibility. Uh, Coach is really trying to establish them. So it's going to be a good non-conference. And, of course, Elon, uh, they, they beat us up there. So uh, we're pretty familiar with them and what we got to do uh, when we play them. All right. This has been the first edition of Goldmine Live from Norms here on the Charlotte 49er IMG Sports Network. Coach, appreciate your time. We'll uh, see you Thursday in Louisville. We'll see you, Bobby. Thank you. There you go. Brad Lambert, the head coach of the Charlotte 49ers. Kevin Donnelly, I'm Bobby Rosensky. Next week, we'll be on location at Angry Ales University. So be sure to stop by and see us there. I'll be there for that one. And the, the real voice, Matt Swearad, will be back here in a couple weeks after the Elon game at Norm. So appreciate everyone tuning in. Charlotte49er.com as well. This has been Goldmine Live from Norm's on the Charlotte 49ers IMG Sports Network. Thank you.